are the best staple Yu-Gi-Oh cards in the game. Today, big dog, I have broken down that extensive list and I will be giving you the 411 on what's the best all the way to what's the worst. Of course, big dog, I can't wait to see what you have to say about these particular cards. Let's go ahead and jump on in. So the criteria for this tier list is very simple. I'm gonna be rating how powerful these staple Yu-Gi-Oh cards are in Yu-Gi-Oh right now. Of course, big dog, if you think that I missed a particular staple, I left a pinned comment because there's a ton of staples to talk about. Let me know and I'll try to include it in the next video. Free my man circular, he didn't do anything. <laughs> we're not, we're not doing this. <laughs> Let's go ahead and start off with Alpha Master of Beast. I think that this card would be really good if you're playing a deck that plays a ton of BBWs. Other than that, it's a staple of those divorce papers together. In theory, this card can be pretty decent against mid-range Yu-Gi-Oh decks, but the problem with Yu-Gi-Oh right now is the volatility of these particular decks. Sometimes you get high-end combo, sometimes you get back row heavy, and then sometimes you get mid-range decks that can stop Alpha Master of the Beast making it a one-for-one -one trade, and that's not what we want to do. We want this card to be a huge trade. The Bestial Monsters are still ridiculously good. I'm gonna say that they're side-worthy. I would say, personally, if your deck benefits from the Bestial Monsters, then you would play them inside of your deck. Other than that, you side them for decks like Unchained. Hold by the grave, guys. We're in a Yu-Gi-Oh! format where there is a ton and a ton of hand traps. This card is actually good. I think that there's a caveat for this card. If your deck immediately loses to cards like Droll and Lockbird, then you probably should main board this card. If not, eh, you don't really need it. Change of Heart did not get a boost from the ban list, but this can be representative of both Change Art and Mind Control. Both of these cards are actually ridiculously strong when going second, but there needs to be a caveat. You need to be able to play a deck that can take full advantage of your opponent's monsters. Maybe it's a Link monster that's fairly generic that you go into quite often. Or maybe we are a Synchro Exceed spam deck that can bypass whatever monster that we take. Overall, I would say both Mind Control and Change Art are good Yu-Gi-Oh cards, but you have to play them sparingly. You can't just splash them in any single Yu-Gi-Oh deck. Cosmic Cyclone is actually really, really good right now still. It's great against decks like Labyrinth, Unchained, and Centurion. But unless you see those decks everywhere, I would say Cosmic Cyclone is a side-worthy Yu-Gi-Oh card. I think in this Yu-Gi-Oh format right now, responsiveness is the most important thing. Cosmic Cyclone is better than Harpy's Feather Duster and Lightning Storm, just because it can get rid of the threat and it can respond to your opponent's card. Cross out Designator, guys. I still don't think that this is a good card. Regardless of the tons and tons of the same cards players are playing, I would still say situational. This card's only genuinely good if you're playing the generic cards and your opponent is playing the generic cards too, and you have the space. That means that it narrows down your decks to maybe one card combo decks, and those decks typically don't need Cross Out Designator anyways. Or unless your deck's really bad. That's probably where Cross Out Designator belongs, in the trash decks. I agree with True Bruz though. Cross Out Designator's only genuinely good maybe as a side deck Yu-Gi-Oh card to stop Droll, but the options for those particular situations are far and few between. I think Dark Ruler No More is a situational Yu-Gi-Oh card right now. The best combo deck in the game right now would be considered as Manadium, and it has a way to play around Dark Ruler No More. It doesn't mean that the card is completely trash or anything, but in a lot of its best situations, it's situational. Dino Wrestler Pankratops just got upped for the ban list for the very first time. I'm expecting it to go to three very soon. This card is crazy. This was actually the answer to a lot of Floodgate Yu-Gi-Oh cards in the game, but that, that kind of got solved, didn't it? Overall, Pankratops is amazing at being able to summon a monster to your side of the field, get over a monster like Caster or Fenrir, and then trade with another card. It's like the perfect Yu-Gi-Oh card in the game. The problem, you have to go second. And also keep in mind, Pankratops destroys. That also is not the best thing in the world from time to time. I think that enemy controller is, it's like change of heart, but quick play. I'm gonna put it as a good card. Enemy controller can be used offensively to dodge cards like Effect Veiler and Infinite Impermanence and steal your opponent's monster. And the difference between enemy controller and cards like mind control is that you can still attack with it. You can still tribute it. You can still do a lot of more things with it. 
It can also be used defensively to switch your opponent's monsters to defense to save your life. Enemy Controller is one of the best Yu-Gi-Oh cards in the game. It's actually really cool how this card, so simple yet so complex, can actually be a really good card. I think with combo decks taking a bigger backseat, Evenly Match becomes a sideboard worthy Yu-Gi-Oh card. Still those situations where Evenly Match doesn't feel as good unless you have another modifier Yu-Gi-Oh card, but it's not a bad card that you can consider siding with. I think that Forbidden Chalice is situational. This card can be really good when responding to somebody that responds to you. Like if they're using cards like Caster of Fenrir. But there's just better Yu-Gi-Oh cards in the game like Dino Wrestler Pankertop that can also respond. Forbidden Droplet has the uniqueness of Forbidden Chalice, except you can force your opponent not to be able to respond to the cards that you send to the graveyard. Also seeing that it's a quick play spell card, it works in conjunction really well with other quick play spell cards. You can just activate them all in a row, then chain the droplet at the end. This card, I still think is a good card in the game right now. Sometimes being able to hit multiple cards is the best thing in the world. And sometimes singular negation isn't the best thing. If Chalice could be used from the hand like Imperm, definitely would change the whole outline. I think Harpy's Feather Duster is a situational card. This card is really good at stopping a lot of spells and trap cards, but the problem with that is even some of the best trap-based Yu-Gi-Oh decks don't commit enough trap cards for you to stop. And even if they did, a lot of times they can activate them anyways. Because Yu-Gi-Oh is so fluid and monsters aren't as important, giving your opponent a Kaiju oftentimes feels like you just lost a card in your hand. A lot of times your opponent doesn't necessarily care about losing a particular monster, but at the same notion, you gotta remember Cards like Change Art and Enemy Controller, they have the function of giving you a monster. Where the Kaiju does the opposite. Caster of Fenrir is easily a main board worthy Yu-Gi-Oh card, guys. Caster of Fenrir should probably be in every single Yu-Gi-Oh deck that it could be fit in. It's a crazy good card that not only forces your opponent to respect your cards with monster effects or by not activating monster effects, it also is a card that can help you set up your own negations of your own. I like to think of it as a modern day Cyber Dragon for the 2006 players. It's a really good card. With the Rise Heart Band, I feel like Kaijus are meh. Yeah, you're not wrong. Kira Kira is in almost the exact same spot as the Kaijus. This card does give you a monster and contribute your opponent's monsters. But after playing this card for so long, I realized that unless we're in formats with big negation boards, Kira Kira isn't often worth it. A lot of times this card will sit in your hand and the perfect opportunity is just to put on the floor, which isn't enough to be able to justify playing this card because not every deck makes put on the floor. Again, I don't think that there's like bad staple Yu-Gi-Oh cards right now for the most part, for the most part. Lightning Storm is almost exclusively used to be able to destroy spells and traps now. Normally, your opponent doesn't necessarily care about the monsters and that's why Alpha, Gam Seal, and Kira Kira are down there. Lightning Storm is going to be a situational Yu-Gi-Oh card. A lot of times you are going to want that quick disruption to be able to banish the card as opposed to massive removal. I think that Solemn Judgment is an amazing side-worthy Yu-Gi-Oh card. This card can punish really hard punish cards like Enemy Controller and Forbidden Droplet, giving you some great counterplay, but also can stop your opponent's best plays, which is really good. Solemn Strike is a lot better than what people give it credit. I think Solemn Strike is actually a side-worthy Yu-Gi-Oh card. If you were going first against a monster heavy combo based Yu-Gi-Oh deck, this card can be a game in Strike is almost just as good as Solemn Warning and with players playing these cards less because they're not necessarily justified, they're even more insane. Super Polymerization is hands down still a good Yu-Gi-Oh card. I'm not sure if I wanna put it in main board worthy and it's because there's so much diversity in Yu-Gi-Oh right now. But if you are playing a deck that can benefit from Super Polymerization in itself, then you definitely should be playing this card inside of your deck. In an effort to stop combo players, players are gonna be playing increasingly more hand traps. With that being said, Triple Tactics Talent, main worthy Yu-Gi-Oh card. This card not only punishes a lot of the hand traps in the card game, it also allows you to go second against mid-range Yu-Gi-Oh decks, and sometimes even against combo decks if you play your cards right. Also, keep in mind what King Tom said, Hydrate, drink water, guys. <sighs> I hope your day is going phenomenal, dog. Triple Tactics Thrust has fallen from grace completely, guys. This card is not as good as Triple Tactics Talent. I wouldn't say that it's situational. Actually, I would say that it's situational. The problem with Triple Tactics Thrust is that the best cards in Yu-Gi-Oh 
are quick plays. What's also even crazy is that a lot of the normal spell cards that came off the Forbidden List, like Mind Control and Pot of Desires, you would probably never thrust into, or if you already play Thrust, you only needed one. Will it be cheaper? Probably not. I would say that Thrust is sideboard worthy, but the problem with it being side worthy is that it doesn't do enough in the sideboard. You're probably better off just playing different cards. Skill Drain, it's a good card. Skill Drain, by definition, is one of the most fairest floodgates in the world because there is a myriad of ways to be able to play around it. I would probably expect to see an uptick in this with decks that can play Skill Drain because it's really good against almost every deck in the game. Sphere Mode's gonna fall into the same spot as the other Kaiju-like cards. I don't think that they're bad. Again, they're just not good enough. We can go ahead and say that there can be only one rivalry of the warlords and goes in match are all limited thank god and they are staple those to force papers together these are not good Yu-Gi-Oh cards i'm actually really excited to never include them in my staples tier list again you won't believe how happy i am ash blossom easily best 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 hand trap in the game it's good at being generic but it's also really good at hitting problematic spots a lot of great spell cards in Yu-Gi-Oh that can special summon or trap cards that special summon. This has been the answer to a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh decks, period. Some of the better decks in the game outright lose to Ash, which actually makes a fair and balanced Yu-Gi-Oh. Droll and Lockbird actually teeters between made by Worthy and a good Yu-Gi-Oh card. I think that Droll will decide the format. It's a card that'll help keep a lot of the combo in mid-range decks in check. But then once players get hip to it, it's a card that you can't main because you know, they won't be playing those decks. It's easily the best side-worthy Yu-Gi-Oh card in a main board worthy, so I'm gonna put it in a good card. I think DD Crow does have a lot more applications than the Bestials from time to time. Sometimes you don't wanna hit light and dark monsters. Sometimes you wanna hit other cards in the graveyard, and that's when this card comes in as a very good card. Ghost Mourner and Moonlit Chill. I think that Ghost Mourner and Moonlit Chill is a main worthy Yu-Gi-Oh card. The reason why sometimes you may play this card over a card like Effect Veiler is because not only can it be activated during multiple phases, also it can dodge cards like Dimension Shifter, which brings us our next card. If you are playing uh, a deck that does play Dimension Shifter and still want monster effect negations, you go Ghost Mourner and Infinite Impermanence. This makes this probably a better than side worthy Yu-Gi-Oh card. I will say if your deck can't afford to play this card, you probably should can strongly consider maining or siding this card. It's incredibly good against a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh decks. Effect Veiler is hands down a main board worthy Yu-Gi-Oh card. Monster Effect Negations is still really, really good. Being able to style on your opponent and stop them from playing Yu-Gi-Oh is important right now. I mean, you could also say the same about Infinite Impermanence. All three of these monsters serve the same purpose, negating your, your opponent's monsters important effects. And with the ban list hitting a ton of monsters in the game, it makes these cards a little bit more powerful. Fantastical Dragon Phantasme is one of my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh cards. The only unfortunate thing about this card with decks like Centurion, Fire King coming out, it makes this card a lot less good. It is hands down a situational Yu-Gi-Oh card. If there are a ton of SP Little Knights or maybe your deck is weak to deck cards like SP Little Knight, or maybe you can easily search this card, you should consider playing it. But other than that, I would put it in situation. It's actually incredibly good against certain matchups and it's ridiculously bad against others. Ghost Mourner is a little better than what people are giving it credit. It does have a unique ability to be able to stop Runic Fountain. And it's also pretty good against decks like Centurion and stuff. I'm gonna put it in side worthy. I would not put this inside of my main board, but when the situation arises, this card is really, really good. Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, 100%. Staple those divorce papers together. I would put it in situational, but I don't think that there's a time where you would play Ghost Mourner or Ghost Ogre over some of these other cards that we have in the Staples tier list. By no means is this card bad, unlike these last three cards in situational, but or staple those divorce papers together, but it's not the upper echelon cards right now. Nibiru? This one's tough. Ooh. Okay, so I think Nibiru is back to the time where it's good against bad players and bad against good players. I would definitely only include Nibiru. You can play Imperm, Effect Villers, and Mourners because that allows you to be able to stop the good players as well. This card by itself, no. But in combination with those other effects, really, really good. There are some matchups where Nibiru just isn't going to be good, but sometimes it's worth the risk of playing this card. Seravis is way better than what people are giving it credit. Seravis is a sideboard worthy Yu-Gi-Oh card. If you're peeping game and your opponent is playing a lot of cards like Mind Control and Change of Heart, if they're playing Ghost Spells, Effect Veilers, and 
infinite impermanences, this card is crazy good at stopping that. Upstar Goblin, ironically, is one of the worst cards to come off the ban list. It's actually ridiculous how bad this card is. Staple those divorce papers together, and it's actually a big reason. Droll and Lockbird, guys. Come on now. <laughs> Now, ironically, I think that Snatch Steel may be situational. Now, the reason why I think that Snatch Steel just might be situational is because when I take your monster, I'm here for a good time, not a long time. I'm using it immediately for a summon. If you look at it in that case, as well as it being a little bit easier to interrupt, Snatch Steel may be a worse card, but I think overall it's a good card. It can be really, really good against SP Little Knight, which... You know, snatching that monster before your opponent can do anything is kind of crazy. It also can be really good at taking your opponent's bird on the floor after it uses its effect. It is a card that can continuously give you value, and all you have to do is give your opponent a thousand life points. That's almost nothing. All right, and the genuinely last three. I really wanted to wait till Maze of Memories fully came out, but I also doubt that there's going to be any more staple Yu-Gi-Oh cards to talk about. It's gonna be really exciting to talk about the decks when they come out, but let's start off with Eye of Illusion. This card says, if you control an illusion or spellcaster monster, you can activate one of these effects. Your illusion or spellcaster monster cannot be destroyed by battle this turn. During your opponent's turn, you can target one face-up monster your opponent controls, take control of it. When an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can target one other face-up monster they control, change the attack target to it and perform damage calculation. I actually think that Eye of Illusion is a pretty interesting card. The main reason is because it does have that change of heart effect, but this time on a quick play that doesn't require you to tribute a monster. The only drawback is that you can only use it if you have an illusion or spellcaster monster. I don't think that there's a ton of those that would be worth it for playing it. I'm gonna put it in situational right now. Transaction Rollback is a very, very powerful new trap card that's coming out in the set. It says pay half your life points, then target one normal trap card in your opponent's graveyard. This effect becomes that normal trap's effect when this card was activated. The other effect is you can banish this card from your graveyard and pay half your life points, then target one normal trap card in your graveyard. This effect becomes that normal trap's effect when this card was activated. The best thing about transaction rollback is obviously being able to copy your own normal trap cards. But another cool thing is that you do not have to pay the activation requirements for cards. Take for example, if you're copying a card like Phoenix Wing Wing Blast in your graveyard, you will not have to discard a card, but you'll still be able to return a card to the top of the deck. I think that this staple card is revolutionary for trap-based Yu-Gi-Oh decks. Labyrinth, Burning Abyss, all of these decks are going to have a field day with this particular card. It might even be time for Burning Abyss to become tier zero again, my boys. Also seeing that just about every single Yu-Gi-Oh player does use infinite impermanence, at the very worst case scenario, this card is a monster negation. Lastly is Bonfire, which allows you to add a level four or lower pyro monster from your deck to your hand. If this card would've came out in any year other than 2023, it would definitely be staple those divorce papers together. The card would be trash. But in today's Yu-Gi-Oh, holy crap, hey, yo. It's really hard to put Bonfire as a staple Yu-Gi-Oh card since it's not generic, but any deck that plays pyro monsters, like, I don't know, the Sinful Spoils Engine, will want to get their hands on this particular card. Also, it can search Volcanic Rocket, and that card's really good if you ever play a deck that needs to discard a lot of cards. And that's all that I have for these staples, tier list, big dogs. It was really, really crazy to be able to get that for you. It was a lot of work. And again, if you guys like what you see, go ahead and let me know down below in the comment section. Appease the algorithm gods. But more importantly, check out these other videos so I can catch you on the next one.